comes in a straight line around the bend. Maybe then it'll tell me why the leaves fall from trees underneath the sky. I live in Belmont. I guess I lived by Washington Park for like two or three months and then I came here and found this place and rented upstairs right next door and fell in love with this block, this place, this area. And now I own this house right here on Goodman Street and I love it here. It's my little getaway. One thing I like about Douglas Avenue is that I know for sure there are definitely poor people who live on, on my block. And there are middle class people and there's maybe a few, well, I don't know how many, but some people who make a lot of money. And the, the best mix for neighborhood is when you have the mixes of the classes, because uh, it, it has a leveling effect uh, in, in that we're all interacting with each other. And um, it, I don't know, it just, it just makes for a better, you know, because rich people can see how poor people live and poor people can see how rich people live. Oh, I like it very much. We have, you know, really nice neighbors. On this particular street, we have a mix of owners and renters. Uh, I think for a long time, uh, this was a little bit shabby and mostly rentals, but people have been moving in and rehabbing some of the houses. We have some children, single people, gays, straights, black, white. So it's very diverse. That's Belmont. I own the Belmont Market and I own this building 431 Monticello Road, which is adjacent to Bel Rio, the local. Moss is on the other end. My name is Preston Coyner. Uh, I'm a 70-year-old, lifelong resident of Charlottesville. Well, I was born here in 1949, and from there until about the 19, early 60s, we had a very friendly neighborhood made up mostly of older people who were very proud of their homes, the historical value of them. You know, th this section of Belmont was not a destination point for people unless they sort of live very close to it. And at that time, it wasn't such a trendy neighborhood. I mean, it was just like a country neighborhood almost. Everybody knew everyone else. The changes are sort of difficult for people of my generation to accept. The current Fitzgerald Tire Company always had an automotive history, and if you look closely, you can see, still see the Texaco sign, where La Taza is, and Bel Rio, and Jeff Easter's shop was, um, was the Dr. Pepper bottling plant. My uncle actually worked in there back in the uh, 50s when it was a Noli's bread plant. That was the entrance way for the trucks to come in and load and unload the bread. Uh, the local, as I recall, was it maybe had an apartment upstairs and that's where the ice cream parlor was downstairs. The, the grocery store was the next building that later became a Mitchell's Furniture Store. This was the, the location for uh, a Collier's Barber Shop. I got my hair cut there, and uh, I don't visit the barber much anymore, as you can probably see. Well, this 
actually is developing into a neighborhood the way I imagine neighborhoods developed in Chicago or New York, you know, where uh, as the need arises, businesses will develop. The whole idea of little mom and poppers, businesses starting up, is the backbone of American society. It's congested, and it's very rare that you can find parking places. And what you're doing with seven restaurants in the area that, in a two block radius, what you're doing is putting a glut on the whole area as far as trying to accommodate patrons, parking, the noise. Since this music, these restaurants have opened up, people here can't find parking, people here can't sleep because the music is so loud when they have bands in there. This place, you hear them 200, 300 feet away. Mm -hmm. And the county says, well, we can't do anything about that. No, it's, these people are, uh, I don't know, I think they're living in, in a different world than I grew up in. They had the Ponderosa up for rent. Why didn't they move over there? Over there in the shopping center up, uh, up on uh, uh, Pantops. You can park anywhere you want to park. Play your music, there ain't nobody living nearby. And then you, you get police coming in all the time, and then you've got fights going on, and uh, it's all one restaurant. It's just one restaurant. The others are pretty good. Oh, the neighborhood's great. The neighborhood's fantastic. The people here are great. The mm -hmm. walking around the neighborhood is great. The, the, yep. the, you got, you've good. got people of all sorts of, of life. It's a wonderful experience until you go to bed at night, and then it's boom, boom, boom. We're about half a block from the, what people call the downtown Belmont area, the, the restaurant area of Belmont. Probably about uh, six, seven houses from Bel Rio. We personally, my family and I, um, we, don't, we don't get any of the noise from it, and uh, we enjoy it. I'm Melissa Easter. This is Roast Neighborhood Espresso Bar and formerly La Taza Coffee House, and I am the owner. Well, the road never goes in a straight line. Around the bend, maybe then it'll tell me why. The leaves fall from trees underneath the sky. Came here when it was La Taza, had an awesome breakfast. And that was called the roast, had the best sandwiches in Charlottesville. Visitors from Kentucky, any comments? Going to uh, right. driving eight hours to come here? No, we don't live here, but we'd certainly come back. <laughs> okay, it's next a good weekend we work. Having so many restaurants in the area, we're not competitive against each other. We're very helpful to each other. You know, if somebody runs out of something, there's always somebody around that can give it. I think what's nice about it is a sense of community that it brings. Everybody co-mingling and in these days that doesn't happen much. There's some neighbors that have been resistant to the change but for the most part we all get along, we coexist together. My coffee is Rainforest Alliance certified. You know, I try to compost all my kitchen refuse and my coffee. I recycle, I, put, I installed solar power. Okay. I'm Wes Wright. I own Belmont Barbecue. We've been open for about three years. It was actually the second restaurant down in this area. I live in Belmont. I'm very active in the Belmont Association. I spent 20 years in Oklahoma in the oil and gas business, and this is a whole lot more fun. I had been coming to Belmont to go to the coffee house across the street, and then yesterday my partner was off, and it was a fabulous spring day, and uh, gentlemen served with some of the best barbecue I have ever eaten. I got the belt buster, and I got pulled pork, three ribs, and french fries, and hush puppies. Coleslaw, that's good. Is there any other way to eat barbecue? It's very good. It's, it's really tasty. As soon as it gets warm enough for barbecue, we're here. It's, it's just nice to be amongst people when you're coming down from the country. I have lived in Charlottesville for many years and became a great fan of downtown Charlottesville. My husband and I and my family go there every Friday night in the summers and go outside and have dinner. I can remember when the local over there was actually a furniture store that we used to go to a long time ago and to see the transformation of this area, which is like a little village, is just amazing. I like to be able to 
to see people live where they socialize. I like community. I'm Adam Frazier. Uh, I'm the owner of The Local. The concept behind The Local is we produce as much local produce and meats as possible. And we also have a lot of wines. Uh, take advantage of the fact that there's 35 vineyards in front of this area. The chairs uh, are from EA Cloria & Sons, which is in Madison County. They've been producing these styles of chairs since, uh, I think, 1850. The uh, bar is made out of uh, reclaimed heart pine from the Heart Pine Company, which is another Charlottesville company. The, the floors are from Mountain Lumber, which is a Charlottesville company that's also reclaimed heart pine. These lights here made from somebody I play cards with, Chip, who works at the Art Center, he ambulates these. So, you know, we try to, again, try to take advantage of a lot of the skilled craftsmanship, the rich heritage that Charlottesville has. You know, we're fortunate enough to have a gardener that is a neighbor of ours. He has a very small area, but he's able to produce a tremendous amount of peppers and tomatoes, corn. He also sells us, um, sells us uh, a lot of that produce. with lobster. These guys had trout. We had a crab dip and a beet salad. This is Tavola. My name is Michael Keveny. I am the owner, operator, and chef of Tavola. Tavola means the food table. The food table is a huge part of the Italian culture. Um, I grew up in an Italian neighborhood, and I'm very much a neighborhood guy. And I thought that um, that this this area, to me, is exactly the type of neighborhood that I like to, to operate a business in. So this is, you know, I love being here all day and just seeing the diversity of the neighborhood and seeing people walking by and people stop in and um, ask us questions and I, I love the other other restaurants for neighbors. One thing that I'm, I'm really happy about is when I do go around to tables, the amount of people from this neighborhood that are our regulars, how happy they are and how many times people thank me for opening. That concept fits really nicely and, and you know, slides right into uh, this neighborhood really nicely. In Italy, you know, if you lived in a, a, a small community, you're going to walk at night to that local trattoria or, you know, that local restaurant and know the people there and know the chef and, and whoever's serving you. Um, there's a certain sense of familiarity we're, we're definitely going for at Tavola and, and achieving. People ask me, what region of Italy do you specialize in? Are you trying to? I, my answer to that is Virginia. You know, if, if Italy were here, what would Italians eat? How would they eat? You know, it, it's a cuisine born of the best ingredients that you can obtain, and, and 
what's being produced locally and right around you and to present them unmanipulated, you know, as much as possible and to let them kind of shine on their own. We come for the muscles, pretty much. And we're both Sicilian, so uh, it tastes like our grandfather's cooking. All right, good evening. We're the Dirty Horse. Here to entertain you this fine Thursday night. first played in this room when it was sax before it became Bel Rio and uh, I just love this room I love uh, the people that, uh, that run the place Jim Baldy's a great guy and uh, he's always been a real straight shooter with me in Belmont you know I grew up in this town and I remember when it was kind of like a bad neighborhood and it was kind of junky houses and naked dirty kids running screaming in the in the streets and kind of just this uh, sketchy scene you didn't you didn't come here at night to hang out i have actually been interested in you know what what it would be like you know to try and come down here and, and play a little but uh but now with the noise ordinance i'm in a rock and roll band so you know noise is definitely not going to be something we can really contain it's not that i want the restaurant closed they just need to keep the music down the way they're supposed to and people sitting on their porches shouldn't have to hear it Oh God, I, I feel for the people that, that get disturbed by this. I really do. And I understand that. But I'm one of the people that came here from a different place and was welcomed here. And it's what I dreamed about. For Christmas, my band brought in um, a group of real, like, great traditional burlesque dancers from Richmond. And we did a, a show on Christmas night here. And apparently, some of the neighbors came to complain about the noise and were exposed to some um, scantily clad ladies. And that got twisted out of proportion and there was a lot of um, things getting thrown around that this was a strip club. Started into this online argument about art, about whether or not you know burlesque is a valid art form. Some kind of proof that, uh, that we shouldn't be here and play the music at night. Me, I'm Kim Chickens, I'm pissing in the wind, Good for the goose, but it's gotta be a mortal sin. I'm good for the goose, but it's gotta be a mortal sin. Put us a million bits of drink and a drink case tonight. Two of them down with the boys, now I got one to the end. So I killed two birds and then I got stoned because of that. Smoke and a mirror sits on me. I think we have too many restaurants. Uh, I, I think people d don't need to eat out as much as they do. And, and you can see I don't miss many meals. <laughs> uh, I guess we were more in, into to family and simpler type of entertainment. Uh, if someone wanted a, uh, wanted a beer, they went to a place that sold a beer and they were, it wasn't a place to spend the evening and uh, uh, get purple martinis. Moss, we went to. Yeah. Awesome bar and beer at Moss. Oh, yeah. Not a huge fan of those little tapas stuff. <laughs> but the, uh, the, I the, like the it. crowd was great. The beer was fabulous. Moss was the first one in here, actually. And uh, it's, it's a great tapas. I mean, it, uh, you can go down there, and Tomas is a good guy. And, uh, you know, they've got, he's got cute waitresses. My favorite restaurant in Charlottesville is um, Moss with sangria and mojitos. And I guess I do go on. <laughs> Bacon stuffed prunes. <laughs> Just, I love the food at Moss. We love Tomas. <laughs> he loves us too in a 
weird way. <laughs> He'd hate it if we were gone. He wouldn't have anything to fuss about. <laughs> I'm not against the Southern Crescent coming in. I was against the fact that a residential area had to be rezoned in order to accommodate another restaurant, making it the seventh one in our little two block radius. Um, one more restaurant that size, is it gonna increase traffic? I don't think, I think what's already happening is happening. I don't think them coming in is gonna make it worse. We didn't need it. Um, we need the residential areas to be maintained. Um, and it, it, it's a dangerous thing when you rezone one residence into commercial that you don't encourage other residences being rezoned as well. I, I, I don't think that all of a sudden everybody's going to want to change their house into a restaurant now. I don't think that. I wouldn't mind seeing more businesses open, but we don't need any more restaurants. We need something that's going to be of value to the neighbors and we were trying to push for something a little bit different. If four young people will go meet at one of the restaurants, the odds are that they will all come separately, and we'll meet there, so you get four vehicles. But, I mean, as you can see now, we have no parking. People do park down here at night, and, and uh, you know, that's fine. I, to me, it's, it usually doesn't impact us that much. They, they come as far as, as our house. But, you know, it just means the restaurants are doing well. You've got, uh, you know, as much parking here as any place else. And my husband and I, when we went on our honeymoon, we were in Charleston for part of it. We went to this really great restaurant called Pugin's Porch, which was an, a renovated house. Um, and it was really nice. And I think that's kind of what they're, they're going for, that sort of southern charm. So I love the idea of it. I love houses that are turned into restaurants. I think it already feels like you're walking into someone's house. I, I think it's a, a great idea. I think the Cajun angle on the southern food is, is a great idea because it's not being done. Maybe my life is useless. How could I prove it? Bring it out so ruthless, baby. I'm abusive to myself. Made in my style is fruitless. How could I prove it? Play it out when it's toothless. Well, I mean, if you look at the life of the neighborhood, so so the, the complainers who, oh, the, you know, the restaurants are too loud, they're ruining the neighborhood, they're taking the soul of Belmont away. Well, my question is, what is the soul of Belmont? It's a transitory thing. City cycles are cycles, so we'll probably have restaurants here for 10 years, 15 years, and then we'll fall out of favor, you know? Just life moves on, it goes to somewhere else, and and then the soul of Belmont will be something else. So while it is what it is, you know, let's revel in it and rejoice. And, you know, we have somewhere cool to eat and drink and hang out. And it's great. Thing to anyone is a job. Take another one.